We've been chicken keepers for many, many years and we've started to use some unusual tools along the way. And these are just two of them. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about all five and what we use them for. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the chicken enclosure on a bit of a gray, miserable day. My name's Hugh, and together with my wife Fiona, who is gorgeous, whatever the weather, we breed rare breed chickens here in rural Lincolnshire. And today, we want to share with you some tips and tricks that we've come up with over the year, where we use things you might not expect to make our chicken keeping life just that little bit easier. This is the first item that we use as a necessity. It's a metal jug, but it doesn't have to be metal. It just has to be any container which contains treats that is used consistently. And that's because the chickens start to recognize if they see this jug, they know treat time is coming and they do follow us. As you can see, Sky is hogging it all at the moment. But it also means that if the chickens ever do get out of the field for whatever reason, by accident or even deliberately, we can use this to attract them back in because they see the jug, they know there's treats in it and they know if they run towards it, they're going to be rewarded. The next one may seem a joke, but it isn't. The comedy rubber egg. Why do you need rubber eggs? Well, when you put new chickens in the flock, they don't know where to lay, but chickens are programmed to lay where they see other eggs. So if you put some rubber eggs in your nest box, wherever you want your chickens to lay, they'll see them and they'll go, oh, that's where I'm supposed to lay. They'll lay in the same place. The other point is broody hens. There's a period where you're not quite sure if your hen is broody or not. And if you give them fertilized eggs, there's a risk. They're just gonna wander off, leave them for more than a couple of hours. The eggs will go cold and everything goes horribly wrong. But during that period where you're trying to establish they're fully broody, give them some rubber eggs. Once they're sat firm and tight on the rubber eggs, take away the rubber eggs, give them fertilized eggs. Everything works really, really well. Now this has two uses. One is so I can pretend to be running through a meadow catching butterflies. In reality, it is in fact a landing net for fishing and it can be used to catch a panicking chicken. We don't use it often, we don't like to. Normally, if we want to do a health check or something, we wait till the chicken's roosting, we gently pick it up, we do whatever health check we need, we return it to the coop, no fuss, no mess, no drama. But now and again, you'll get a livestock thing that's in a panic. I'll give you an example. One of our chickens, one of those stupid mylar filled balloons with a string on it was released, came down in our garden, got wound around a hen's leg. She panicked, running away from this shiny thing that appeared to be chasing her, crashed into an electric fence, but was going at a rate of knots. How do we catch her? With the landing net. And all you do, run it along the ground, scoop the hen up, and very quickly you can remove what's causing the panic or treat an injury, etc. It's fast and it's humane, but obviously we would prefer to do things much more calmly. Every now and again though, you just don't get a choice. Unlike Hugh's manly landing net, actually manly butterfly net, that's the new name I'm going to have for that net. I've got this dainty little thing, look at it, it's telescopic. You might be looking at it and thinking, but that's a child's tadpole net. And it is, this is exactly what it is. This is what I would have used it for when I was a kid to catch those tadpoles and bring them home in the jam jar like most kids do. But now I'm using it for the chicks. Why do I need to catch the chicks? Well, they can have something called pasty butt and it's when they're very very young they're learning to actually poop and live and be little chicks but they're not very good at squatting so that poop gets caught in the back end builds up builds up builds up and it could eventually build up to a point where it actually blocks their vent and stops them pooping anymore and that is a real health issue so using this is really, really important. And we couldn't use a landing net because the gauge on the net would just allow them to run straight through. So this being nice, fine netting really, really works. But I have to say, I like the color, but I'm thinking of getting a pink one too. Now, 
Now and again, if you keep any kind of livestock, you need to move it. You may need to usher it towards something. With chickens, you might need to usher them into the coop at night if there's a storm coming or something. Or you need to maybe move them away from something, like a break in the fence. And of course, if you've ever done it, you know what you do. You put your arms out and you move forward and they gently back away from you. And the object of this is to do it without traumatising them. The trouble is, chickens are small and chickens are fast. And what you really need is longer arms. Let me show you my arm extensions. The technical word for them is sticks. But if you spread them wide, the chickens find it really hard to get past you and you can carefully and calmly usher them where you need them. The next item is this, it's a child rake. And what's the purpose of it? Well, it's just a pooper scooper. Yes, a child rake is a chicken pooper scooper. All I need to do is scoop it under the poop, pop it in a bucket and that's it. But why do I want it? Well, it's not just that I'm cleaning up in the field. I'm actually making use of that too because it's amazing fertilizer. If you've ever been to the garden center, you'll pay a fortune for pelleted chicken manure. It really is some of the best stuff for growing your veggies, growing your fruit. And here on the homestead, that means we don't have to buy any of that pelleted chicken manure. We do it all ourselves with our amazing little chicks. Those were five essential items for chicken keeping that you may not have even thought about. They're all a little bit unusual. We do have a couple of highly commended though. We've got one which is olive oil and cotton buds. Now why do you need that? And that's to do with the pasty butt. So when you clean those little chicks off and you want to stop more poop adhering to the back end, just apply a little olive oil with the cotton buds and that will really help them. And the other one is the hairdryer. Now why do we need a hairdryer? Well, when you've got older chickens, you may have some issues with them actually keeping themselves clean. So actually washing them in a bucket may be a better idea. And a hairdryer is really useful. Now we, when we first used it, thought it would freak them out because of the noise. But actually that lovely gentle warmth, if you put it on a low heat setting and a low speed, they love it. Just look at Gannett. She's having a whale of a time, really, really enjoying it. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give us a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a, a subscriber, hit the subscribe and the bell icon and you'll get to know of every new video as soon as it goes live. We're open for questions, so leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching. It's goodbye from me, it's goodbye from Uno and the chicks and we look forward to seeing you next time.